It's showtime, everybody. I'm Rob Wu, and this is Pancras, Legends of Mixed Martial Arts. And sitting alongside me, as always, our fight insider, expert analyst, Josh Barnett. Good to be here again, Rob, as always. Uh, today, actually, will mark the uh, debut to our American fans here uh, uh, watching this Pancras show of one of my rivals, the gigantic Semi Schilt. Uh, but before we get to that, I have a question for you, Josh, that mm -hmm. fight fans are dying to know. Are you going to fight Federer or what? I'll fight him, but really what it comes down to is uh, finding the right opportunity and the right place to make a match of that caliber happen. And uh, friends or not, we're both top professional athletes, and Fedor and myself have already agreed that we would, we would make the match if the conditions were right. And uh, honestly, a pancreas would be a, a very great place uh, to hold a match of that caliber, I believe. And I hope someone in Japan is uh, taking notes. But let's get to our first fight. It's Yuki Kondo against Kyuma Kunioku. Yuki Kondo versus Kyuma Kunioku. And uh, Yuki Kondo is in the blue. Uh, Kunioku decided to go back with the hot pink. Uh, I guess it worked last time. Maybe it'll work again. It is the early 90s. Uh, I'm not sure if that was ever popular in America, but... Kunioku, hey, whatever works for him. And uh, both fighters very young. Kondo just 20 years of age, Kunioku just 19. So uh, the best years are ahead of both these fighters. Both fighters seem to be uh, patiently uh, checking each other out. A couple of nice uh, palm strikes by Kondo sends uh, Kunioku back. High kick, more palm strikes. And Kondo being the aggressor. Very on. aggressive Kondo. Kondo is known as a striker, but Josh, a Kondo is not a big fan of lifting weights. Should there be a power concern if he doesn't do that? Can he get TKO power without lifting weights? Well, Kondo, regardless of lifting weights or not, as he defends a single leg from Kunioku, is a, as, as a, just born with the ability to knock people out. And that's something that you can't really develop by lifting weights. And Kondo, very active at the start, putting Kunioku in a corner and throwing blows. But Kunioku managed to get out as we move on in the fight. Kunioku with a little front check kick, body strike, and Kondo returning in kind with more strikes and a kick, which Kunioku grabs a single leg and do drops into uh, an attempted leg lock. But Kondo, sensing it, uh, lands in the half guard, blocks the attempt, and is working from the top now. Kondo uh, actually has the nickname Bluto uh, from Pai Pai. As you see, he is still both fighters in a clinch on the ground. And uh, how is Kondo's ground game at this point in his career, Josh? Kondo's very savvy on the ground. And uh, he's, he's, as he's defending the leg lock attempt by Kunioku here, Kunioku going for that toe hold. But Kondo is well versed in the ground, and he's spending a lot of time in the Pankers Dojo really refining his skills. And Kunioku working on that leg of Kondo. What does Kondo have to do to avoid this position? Kondo really needs to, uh, well, one, going after a nice <laughs> toe hold like that in return is, is a good way to... Uh, to do to to take advantage of that situation, but as they're restarted, as they were too close to the ropes, but Kondo really would need to separate Kunioku's legs from uh, around his leg and uh, come up in between to escape that leg position and free his leg up. Both fighters exchanging a couple knees. Kondo, the southpaw, also known for his devastating jumping high knee attack. Nice rolling knee bar entry by Kunioku, but definitely blocked by Kondo, as Kondo now works from uh, Kunioku's guard as Kunioku looks to try and secure an arm here. Double wrist lock by Kunioku. Both. Kondo spins around the head, reverses, and looks for his own double wrist lock. Wraps both, an arm bar. Both fighters are nearing the ropes a little bit. One of these guys might want to try to take this fight to the center before the ref decides to break them up, and it looks like Kondo is doing exactly that right now. Yeah, they seem to be a, a little... Uh, paying some disregard to the fact of where they end up and just really coming after each other. Big. And a nice strike, and right. Kunioku stumbles, uh, falls. Luckily, the rope caught him. Uh, if he was unlucky in the bad position, he might have fallen out of the ring. Uh, that is the time limit for this match. And now, Josh, we're going to see the debut of Semi Schilt. Now, he's almost seven feet tall. I think he should be playing some basketball. <laughs> well, uh, I don't know why his decision was to go into karate instead of basketball, but I know he's found a lot of success as he is a Daidojuko champion, uh, as well as uh, other champions, uh, championships earned in, in uh, karate, and as of recent, is a two-time K1 Grand Prix champion, which is like being the pinnacle of all kickboxing. And speaking of Schilt success, you personally have had success versus Schilt. Yeah, me and Schilt have had uh, a number of matches against each other, and both uh, being very difficult in, in, in to to finish off a, a guy like that. But 
They say he's almost six foot, uh, almost seven foot, but I watched six him 11. against the guy six foot nine stare at the top of that guy's head. I swear, if he's six eleven, it's because he's slumping. And he's going to be fighting Man Man Manabu Yamada, who is five foot nine, a huge size disadvantage. Yeah, and and when I fought him, I'm six foot three, and in the pictures, it looks like some some dad with his little kid in the <laughs> ring. You know what I mean? So Yamada at five foot nine is going to look absurd almost. And let's just see how absurd it does look. Sammy Schilt versus Manabu Yamada. Not as short in stature as he is, but he has been successful to this point, being a runner-up in that first King of Pankers tournament. And, uh, however, fighting against somebody like Sammy Schilt has to be intimidating. And as Yamada tries to take down a Schilt, I think sh sh the Schilt's leg is almost as tall as Yamada. Yeah, his hip almost comes up to Yamada's chin, which means uh, when he throws knees, what a, he doesn't have to pick it up very far to connect to the face, and this would become a very dangerous and successful technique for Semi Schilt later on in his career. And as we see Yamada trying to take Schilt down, but unsuccessful, but uh, Josh, Semi Schilt, not, he also has submission skills as well. Yeah, he does, and, and at, uh, at the end of his career, uh, in Pankers even, he was nice knees from Schilt, big low kick, as uh, Schilt continuing to control the action. And Yamada just trying to hang on, and now he has a hold of Schilt's leg. Let's see if he can do anything with this, but Schilt slapping him in the face. Yeah, pounding down with those uh, palm strikes as Yamada is working for that leg lock, but Schilt defending and using his size to, to great advantage. And a Big body shot by Schilt there, Josh. Those will take its toll on Yamada over the course of this entire fight. Yeah, I agree, Rob. Uh, Schilt eventually would go on to become a uh, certified Pankers hybrid wrestling instructor, so that should show you his dedication and level of uh, training that he put in in Pankers, and as Yamada working the Achilles lock to little success there. And Schilt showing he's not just a striker, a very impressive work on the ground as we move ahead in this fight. Schilt with a forearm choke from the mount, trying to apply pressure against Yamada, catching the head. And I think he might have Yamada in a chokehold right now. Well, either way, this is uncomfortable and this is not good for Yamada to be in. Wow, cranking that, that form across the neck. reaching for the rope, does get it. He'll be de uh, deducted one point. He has two more points remaining, and Yamada's up, breathing hard. It uh, seems like he might be bleeding from the mouth. I think they're going to get the doctors to take a quick look at him. And the thing about Semi is, uh, that wasn't really the perfect position to apply such a choke, but because he is so tall and so long, his limbs are so long, uh, he was able to, to wrap that arm around his head in such a way and make it effective because of his size, and that's something that you can't really train against. And uh, Yamada is okay, and as we saw with his match against Maurice Smith, uh, Yamada, he's one tough cookie. Yes, he is. He's, he's certainly not going to back down, but he's having uh, quite the difficult endeavor as he oh, eats that knee. Oh, what a knee by Schild, and Schild let knees of fury just pushing Yamada all over the ring. It, cutting him down with low kicks, following it up with knees, sucking up that front choke right there. Yamada, got to be in danger. And the fighters near the ropes, Yamada, in a chokehold, he might want to grab the ropes, or maybe maybe he can wait and the ref will break it as you see Schilt uh, let go of the choke. Switching to the forearm choke from Mount is Schilt. 